Welcome to Yoga with Christy. I'm Christy. I'm so delighted that you're here. I am a certified yoga instructor. I love a great vinyasa. And if you're ready to move your body, if you're ready to tap into your inner strength and to feel inspired by all that you are, then I want you to grab your mat and let's get flowing together. All right, everybody, here we are. You've done the hard work. You're on your mat. So let's have an amazing flow. Doesn't matter what it's gonna look like. All that it matters is how you feel. So go ahead and stretch out into a child's pose. You're gonna reach your fingertips towards the front of your mat. You're gonna let your hips reach down towards your heels as far as they will go, bringing your knees nice and wide so there's space for your belly to expand and contract as you breathe slowly in and out through your nose. Let's start with three really conscientious, connected, ujjayi breaths in and out through the nose. Keeping the lips sealed, allowing for there to be that sound, that wave-like quality of breath washing over you. Bringing in new energy and, and when you exhale, you expel anything stuck, anything stagnant. Breathe into a table, spread out your fingers, root down through the knuckles, set your knees up underneath your hips. And on your next breath in, I want you to drop your belly and pull your heart forward, look up to the sky, and then exhale into your cat pose, rounding out your spine, letting your head hang heavy. Look to your navel. It's really good. Every time we move through these, you'll create a little bit more space for yourself. Maybe there's space between hips and ribs. Exhaling, maybe you can let those shoulder blades protract just a little bit further away. Inhale, opening your heart, looking up if the neck allows. And exhaling and last here, you'll round round, really tuck through the tailbone, draw the belly button in towards your spine. Beautiful work. Come to a neutral spine, sending the crown of your head forward, reaching your tailbone back and then reach Left toes back, right fingertips forward. Your bicep will be in line with your ear. I want you to reach forward through the fingertips, reach back with the heel. Can you bring the heel in line with your hip? But being mindful not to hike the left hip up. I want the hip facing down, the knee facing down, all five toes facing down. Take a great big breath in. Exhale, pull the knee into your elbow. Good, do that again. Inhale, feeling length and space. Exhale, contracting in, hugging in, feeling the strength of your whole self. Inhale, long. Exhale, really pulling the belly in, hugging skin into muscle, into bone. Inhale, long here. And then exhale, bend that left knee towards the sky and then reach back with your right hand. See if you can catch the foot. You might not catch the foot, that's totally okay. If you did catch the foot, press your foot into your hand and then maybe look up over your right shoulder. Let the tailbone drop down like it's dropping towards the back of your mat to create a neutral pelvis as you kick, kick, kick and open through the hip flexor on that left side. Exhale, release. Really good. Reset if you need to, shake out the supporting hand. And when you're ready, meet me back in this bird dog. You're going to reach the left fingertips forward, right heel back. Draw the right kneecap up your leg. Draw the belly in towards your spine. Low ribs knit together. Breathe in. As you exhale, bring your knee into your chest. Bring your elbow towards your knee. Do that again. Long length. Inhale. Exhale. Hug it in. Really round out the spine. Can you make this even bigger, reaching forward, reaching back? Exhale, draw the thigh closer to your chest, bring the elbow together. Inhale, let get long. And then as you exhale, bending that right knee, see if you can reach for the foot. It might be different on this side. Don't give yourself any judgment or any kind of dialogue. You just are where you are. Kick into the foot. Maybe look over the left shoulder.
Stay for one more great big breath in. And then exhale, release. From your table, fan out your fingers and lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. You'll pedal at one leg, letting the right heel fall heavy towards the mat, bending into your left knee, and then switch. If at any time you need rest, then you do that. You take rest. Listen to your body. The body and the wisdom in your body is smarter, wiser than anything that I can invite you in to try. I want you to feel like you're reaching towards the edges of your comfort zone because that's where we grow. But if ever the breath is gaspy and short, if ever you feel like you're overwhelmed, then you just take child's pose or come back to this pose right here, downward facing dog. Go ahead and bring your toes a little closer together and lift your right leg way up high to the sky. Bend that knee, stack and open up your hips. Keep driving that right knee towards the ceiling as you sink your left heel towards the floor. Take a breath in and then bring your knee to your nose. Maybe you can even pull the knee between your upper arm bones, press the ground away from you so much that you can step that foot right between your hands. Let the left knee come down. Anjali Asana, you'll reach your fingertips towards the ceiling. Exhale, bring them back down. Curl your back toes, lift that leg up off the mat as an option. You can keep it on the floor and then spread your wings, reaching that right hand towards the sky. And then if you can, follow your gaze up to that right thumb, if your neck allows, making sure that the shoulders draw away from the ears, making sure that that left hip isn't dropping down. You really wanna lift it up, bend deep into the right knee. Take another great big breath in. As you breathe out, frame the right foot, step back, high plank. Option to bring your knees to the mat or just bend your elbows towards your rib cage and come all the way down to the floor. Really good work, I'm proud of you. Inhale, locust pose, roll the shoulders back, lift the ankles, the knees. Zip up the inner line of your legs, look down the bridge of your nose. Can you wrap the triceps around the upper arm bones so that the shoulders are broad? Stay and breathe. Can you lift up a tiny bit more, but think more length as you lift, more length through the crown, length through the toes. One more inhale. Bring those hands down by your low ribs, option for upward facing dog, or push through bent knees and go right into downward facing dog. Set your eyes at the back of your mat, lift that left leg to the sky, bend, stack, and open up this hip. Can you get long by pressing your hands forward and reaching the knee high? Feel your left side body lengthen and then bring your knee to your nose. Exhale out all your air. Really drive the knee forward as you press your hands into the mat and then step it forward. Bring the right knee down. Anjali Asana. Maybe hooking the thumbs the opposite way, reaching high. Exhale, hands come to frame that left foot. Curl the back toes, strong through that back right leg, and then open up, sending the left hand towards the sky. Really squeeze your right glutes here. Pressing down with the right hand, but reaching up through the left. Allowing shoulders to stack. Lifting the right side belly. One more big inhale. And then frame your left foot. Step back high plank. Hold in your high plank. Option to drop to your knees. Slowly lower chaturanga. So only halfway down. Good. Up dog, press the ground away from you, look up. Downward facing dog, ha. Beautiful work. We practice yoga to allow our minds to slow down a little bit. And for me, the physical body is such a beautiful instrument when I'm focused on the physical sensations in my body, it allows the busy chatter, the constant dialogue 
just start to fall away a little bit. I start to focus and feel. And the more we focus and feel, and the more present we become, the more you start to get clear about what is actually happening, as opposed to where our mind likes to take us, or my mind likes to take me. Lift up onto your tippy toes, and then walk your toes all the way up to the top of your mat. See how far you can get by keeping your legs straight. You can come all the way up to the top. Beautiful, well done. Take a rag doll. Rag dolls are such beautiful, metaphoric shapes for letting go. Use the weight of your arms, pulling on the length of your spine, the weight of your torso over your legs to just totally let go. Close your eyes. Feel your breath. Notice where there might be a little bit of resistance either physically or emotionally, mentally. Without needing to respond or react, just notice. Be gentle with yourself, give yourself grace. Drop any expectation that you have for your body or for this practice. And just be ready to move and flow and be. So different than the constant doing and analyzing and planning and thinking. You just need to move and breathe and be. Release your hands. Heel toe your feet to touch. Half lift, lengthen your spine forward so that your upper body is parallel to the floor. And then exhale, tuck your chin, look to your navel, really let go. Reach up, extended mountain pose. You'll lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold it forward. Empty, empty, empty. And then half lift, draw the heart forward. Hands to the mat, step or shoot back into your chaturanga, low plank pose. Use your inhale to lift you away from the floor, pressing down, opening up. Downward facing dog, lift those hips up and back. Set your eyes. We use the tool of our breath, our ujjayi breath. We use the tool of our drishti, setting our gaze, keeping committed to what we see, not allowing our eyes to dart around. <coughs> Excuse me. Lift your heels, bend your knees, take a hop or a step all the way up to the top of your mat. When you get there, inhale, long spine. Exhale, release it forward. Rise. So this is your sun A. Reach up, look up. Every time we go through a repetitive action, get bigger every time. Empty it out. Fold in half. Let everything go. Half lift, long flat spine. Plant the hands, step, or jump back into your low push-up. Upward facing, roll the shoulders back. Shoulder blades come together on the spine. And then lift the hips up and back, down dog. Big inhale together. Big exhale together. Last time, lift those heels to the sky, bend your knees, look to where you wanna land, and take a giant step or a hop all the way forward. Inhale, draw the belly in towards the spine. Keep the belly connected as you fold deeply over your thighs. From here, chair pose. Reach your fingertips forward, if that's too much, keep them in line with your shoulders. Drop the hips back, weight is in your heels. So you might feel like you'll topple over, and you might, and who cares, so what? You wanna feel the strength of your legs supporting you. You wanna reach forward through the fingertips, fan out the hands, allow the shoulders to drop down your back, and allow for a little burn to start to happen in your legs. The fire will not burn you, it just burns off what's not needed, so stay in the fire. One more breath in. Exhale, let it go. Amazing. Take a half lift. And then hands to the mat, high to low plank, you flow. If ever these vinyasas become too much, you just bypass them. Because we always meet back in downward facing dog. 
Okay, go ahead, step that right foot between your hands, pivot your left foot. We're lifting up into warrior one, rise. Your front thigh is parallel to the floor. You're anchored through that back left foot. You could pick up all 10 toes and press the ground away from you with the mounds of the feet and, the, and both heels. At the same time, you're drawing the right hip back and the left shoulder forward. Big inhale. Okay, let that go. Bring your foot, maybe you wanna float your right toes. Maybe you wanna drop your knees. Let your breath be your guide here. Feel your body warming up. Lift the left leg and step it forward. Warrior one rise. And if you feel the pelvic floor pulling up. So as the hips descend, you're lifting away from the floor. Anchored through both feet, but not gripping, not tense. Spin out your fingers, spread them out and take up space. Look up and let's flow. Hands to the mat. High to low push up. Up dog, open your heart. And then lift those hips as high as they can go. Set your eyes. Let your breath come back. One more inhale. And stay for the exhale. Heels to the side. Bend your knees. Float to your hands. We'll do one more sun B. Lifting halfway up. Exhaling, folding forward. Chair pose. Reach forward. Sit low. Stay. We'll take one more big inhale and then let everything go. Fold over your legs. Acknowledge your incredible strong body. Half lift, get long through your side body. Plant the hands, keep the length. Strong front side body. Up dog, broad shoulders. Downward facing dog, lift the hips. Step that left, not the right foot forward. Take warrior one, big reach up. From here, open to warrior two. Reverse, big stretch back, and then cartwheel your hands. Plant them on the floor, step it back to down dog, or take the vinyasa, high to low. From down dog, empty out all your air, step the left foot forward on empty, rise up, warrior one. You guys have got this, you're doing so well. Open to warrior two. Reverse, big inhale. Okay, cartwheel. Really draw in to lower down. Open the heart. Down dog, ha. Option to bring your knees to the mat for child's pose. Notice if you're allowing it to become overwhelming, if you feel stuck or sticky. You wanna flow like water. Water doesn't get upset when there's obstacles, rocks in its path. It yields and carries on. We are mostly water. Connect in with that incredible element. Feel the flow, the flow of your breath. The flow of your energy. Beautiful work. Okay, lift that right leg high. Bring your right knee to your nose. Inhale, lift that leg back to the sky. Bring your right knee to your right tricep. Can you touch knee to skin? Inhale, lift that leg. Bring your knee across to the left tricep. Pause. You're gonna extend that foot onto the floor to the left side of your mat. Keep pressing the pinky edge side of that right foot into the mat. Press your right hand and your left foot into the mat. Reach up, look up, and then exhale, sending the right leg back up 
bend the knee, stack and open. So you're in a three-legged down dog, option to stay, or flip right over into flip dog, both feet facing away from you, right fingertips reaching for the horizon where the floor and the wall meet. This is a lot of glutes, really squeeze your bum, lift your pelvis, and then chaturanga. Or don't, we'll meet in downward facing dog, yogi's choice. And then right away, let's lift that left leg up and back. As you exhale, bring that knee through the upper arm bones. You can do this. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, bring the knee to the elbow. Touch it, touch it. Inhale, you got that. Lift up across your body. Okay, you know where we're going. Keep the leg there. Just extend the foot onto the floor. And then reach that right hand up into this fallen tree variation. Active through the feet to lift the pelvis. Strong side body. Freedom and space across your collarbones, your chest, your shoulders. Take a breath in, lift up. And then hands to the mat. Send that left leg up and back. Stack your hips, open up. And then if you'd like to stay here, you do it. Otherwise, you're coming into flip dog. Reaching the left fingertips forward, engaging through the back body, especially those glutes. Maybe you can let your head go active through that right hand side, really press the ground away from you. And we'll meet in down dog, option to vinyasa through, high to low plank, upward facing dog, shine your heart forward and free. Downward facing dog, amazing work. Send that right leg back up to the sky and then step your right foot between your hands. We're coming into crescent lunge. You want to have both hips facing forward. And then take a little bend into that back left knee so you can scoop your pelvis slightly. So you're, you want a neutral pelvis, lifting the pubic bone up, letting the tailbone drop down. And then if you can keep that in your pelvis, start to straighten out the back leg. Only so much as you can keep it in the pelvis. Bring your hands through heart center, hinge your body forward. Two options. First, bring the outside of that left uh, elbow to the outside of the right knee. Press your hands together, broaden through the shoulders and look up towards the sky. If that's too much, you just drop that left hand down to the floor. I want you to go for length here. From the heel right through the crown of your head, you get so long. When you inhale, you inhale space into each and every vertebrae. So that when you exhale, you feel the space and you can sort of slide into that space energetically. Big inhale. Stay and breathe that out. Come up into warrior two. Gaze goes over your right middle finger. I know you're feeling a lot right now. There's a lot happening. And trust me when I say that the mind wants to give up before the body does. Can you breathe louder than your thoughts? The body's actually fine, even though the mind likes to draw, likes to get out of things a bit before we're probably ready. It's its job. Inhale, reach back to keep us safe, free from danger. Exhale, extended side angle. Your options are forearm to thigh. Left fingertips up and over the left ear, or maybe you drop that right hand down to the inside of the right foot. Again, inhaling length. Exhaling, twisting open. Hug the outer right hip under. Take a big inhale. Stay for the breath out. And then cut really your hands back up into your warrior two. Reach back, fill up your lungs, reverse your warrior. Stay, exhale. Your next breath in will straighten out that right leg. And then your next breath out brings you into triangle. Fingertips down, gaze up towards your left hand. Feel yourself rooted, pressing into the earth. Feel water behind the joints. Feel space, expansiveness. Set your eyes, be still, 
become. Feel what's happening in your body. And then pressing through both feet and letting the left fingertips pull you all the way up to stand. You're going to pivot both feet so that they're facing the left hand side of your mat. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fold into a wide legged straddle, releasing the hands to the mat. You can take a deep bend into one knee and then the other. That might feel really good. If you have a headstand and want to pop up into a headstand, this is a nice place to do that. There are elements in the practice where you're bringing a lot of energy, you're giving a lot of energy. And then there's elements in the practice where you're receiving. Learn to notice both, just like in life. Take what you need. Feel restored, recentered. Gently release. You're going to lift up halfway, walking your fingertips over towards that right foot. Step the right foot all the way back. One more vinyasa. Well, there'll be more than just one, but take one now. Exhale, send your hips up and back. And we'll take it right to the second side. Let everything go, lifting the left leg to the sky. Step the left foot forward. Crescent lunge, you rise. Again, creating a little scoop of the pelvis. Always want full alignment. So lift the pubic bone up. Drop the, the tailbone down. And then only so much as you can keep that alignment, straighten out the back leg. That'll really stretch through the hip, hip flexor. Bring your hands to heart center. And then you know you can either hook the elbow on the knee and start to twist and turn your gaze up towards the ceiling, or you bring that right hand to the floor for support and you reach the left fingertips forward. Both are perfect. Really active through that back right glute. Allowing to move into the space you're creating on every inhale as you exhale. Stay for this last breath out. And then with so much control, glide into your warrior two. Beautiful. In your warrior two, notice your lower ribs. Are they splayed open? Can you draw them in and down? In your warrior two, or do you have a neutral pelvis? Or are you kind of arching your low back and you pull everything in towards the midline zip up through the front line of your body extended side angle forearm to thigh the right hand goes over the right ear you're anchoring through that back right foot maybe the fingertips come all the way down maybe you take a half bind or a full bind listen to what it is that's calling you today the change is just so minuscule. I probably won't see you moving into the pose deeper, dancing on the edge of your comfort zone, but you'll feel it. You'll know. Open your heart. Stay with generous breath. And then on your next inhale, come all the way back up into warrior two. Exhale, soften. Inhale, reverse. Stretching out of that left side body. And come all the way into Trikonasana. Imagine like somebody was behind you, supporting you. Allow yourself to lean back. Allow yourself to press into the ground so much that you feel rooted and supported. So that when you expand out, you know that you are strong. You know you are secure. And that no matter what kind of storm comes at you, you're stable and you'll come back up to upright. Press yourself down, reach up, pivot both feet towards the right corner of your mat, the right side of your mat. Interlace your hands behind you, open your chest, fill up your lungs and fold it. Beautiful work.
Let your head shake. No, let it shake, yes. Breathe into your armpits, the tops of your shoulders. If you need a strap or a towel here, you do that. And learn to modify, learn to rest, adapt, so you can stay in the work, stay in the practice. You're doing great. Let me release your hands. And then walk your fingertips up towards that left foot and take a big step forward with the right foot. We're gonna sit on our bum and roll onto our back. Bring your shins so that they're parallel to the floor. Press the tailbone down into the earth. Hands can be by your sides or behind your head. We're gonna just take the right heel and keeping the knee at a 90 degree angle, tap the right heel to the floor and lift it back up. Tap the left heel, lift it back up. Good, we're gonna continue like that, going right, left, really drawing the belly in towards the spine, keeping the low back connected to the earth. Keeping everything quite still, amazing. Okay, pause here, both shins parallel to the floor. This time interlace the hands if they're not already behind the neck and then tap both heels. If this is too much, then no worries. You just go back to tapping one at a time. Tap. Exhale, tap. Exhale, tap. Good. Pause, take a moment to reset. This time, you're gonna keep the head and shoulders lifted up off the mat. And then as you lower the heels, I want you to lower the head and shoulders back to the mat. Exhale, crunch everything together. We'll do five. Four. Really good focus. Squeeze it together. Last one, hold the top, hold, 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 squeeze, contract, squeeze, contract, good. Extend both fingertips forward, reach forward towards the right with the right hand, reach with the left. We'll go side to side, keep the toes flexed and lifted. If at any time this becomes too much, you rest or just place the soles of the feet on the mat and stay with us. We'll go for 10, nine, eight, Soften your face for six, five, are you breathing? Four, three, two, amazing, beautiful. Send the feet to the floor, lift the hips, so release the hip flexors. Stay here. And then leading with your tailbone towards the backs of your knees, bring your whole spine down. Allow your knees to fall right. Allow your knees to fall left. Okay, you've got two back bends. We'll start with another bridge. So lift your chest, lift your hips, lift your chest, walk your fingertips towards one another, interlace your hands, maybe your shoulders come closer together. This is a lot of glutes. Squeeze the glutes, extend the knees forward, press the inner uh, big toe down. Breathe generously into your chest, feeling the lifting of your whole body away from the floor. Amazing, undo your hands, and then leading with your tailbone, come all the way down. And again, windshield wiper your legs, one way and then the other. The next pose is wheel pose. If wheel's not yet in your practice, then you just go ahead and take bridge again. Otherwise, join me. You're gonna plant your hands on either side of your ears, root through the feet, root through the hands, and start to press your body up. You can start with your, hand, your head, the top of your head on the mat. It's a great place, like a half wheel, or you can press all the way up all the way up into your full wheel. Stay for five or four. Stay for three, two, and come down. Amazing work. 
Well done, each and every one of you. Come to Supta Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together. So you're in reclined cobbler's pose. Your knees are open wide. I really like to place one hand on my heart and one hand on my belly in this pose to feel my body. Feel the shifts that you've created by moving and breathing. By putting aside some of the thinking and planning and analyzing and doing, and just being here, getting this done, being for you. How much more valuable than we put value on or our attention on? So important. So just acknowledge yourself for being here. And when you feel complete, you'll bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a huge squeeze. And we're going to move into a hip opener. You can rock side to side. Rock up and down your mat. If you'd like to stay on your back and take thread the needle, you can do that where you just cross one ankle over the knee. You can stay lying down or you can sit like this. Or I'm moving all the way into half pigeon. So you can meet me there. I start from the down dog. Sending the right leg way up high. And then I bring right wrist to right knee. And then I walk that left leg back, keeping both hips square to the front of my mat. Maybe recline to your forearms. Maybe you make a little shelf for your forehead with both palms stacked. And soften all the way back. Usually in times like this, when we're not moving up and down and around the mat so much that the thoughts do creep back in, and you start to think about the other things that you need to do in your day. And it's normal. And can we just commit wholeheartedly to being here? Practice is almost done. And you just give yourself these last few moments Last few moments of connecting to the feeling sensation of noticing breath, of being still. Just one final exhale, really let go. And then press yourself up. Let your weight fall onto that right hip. Bring your left leg around in front. We're going to take double pigeon. So maybe lean onto that right hip and bring your left ankle on top of the right knee. And then slowly bring the left hip, the left sits bone back to the floor, allowing both shins to stack like firewood. And then this might be enough. This is a lot for me. If you're super flexible and you wanted to bring your forearms down to the mat in front of you or even just reach forward, you can do that. Maybe supporting through the back side is better. See what feels good in your body. Also acknowledging that every day is different. Every practice is different. Really beautiful. Good job, guys. Slowly start to unravel your legs. And we'll make our way back to down dog to take it to the second side. Maybe if you need to, you pedal out your legs left and right. And when you're ready, go ahead, lift the left leg high and bring the left knee in towards the left wrist, making an effort to square the hip. So there's a tendency, I see a lot of people kind of leaning over towards the left in this pose. It's fine if you're super tight or if that feels good in your body, but eventually what we want to do is try and square the hips towards the floor and then coming down as much or as little as it feels natural 
comfortable. Try to resist resisting. This is a super intense pose. So if you're really gripping and really, you know, counting on the minutes for the pose to be over, <laughs> which was definitely me at one point, can you just like start to soften that? Send your breath into where you're feeling tight sensation. Letting go. Trusting. Coming from a place of allowing, not needing to control it all so much. One final long, slow exhale. And then let that weight fall onto your left hip. And we'll take double pigeon on the second side. So you're gonna take that right ankle over the left knee. And then if this is great by you, you stay kind of leaning over towards the left. If you can bring the sit bone down so that both sit bones are on the floor, try that. Keep that right foot nice and flexed. Keep both feet nice and flexed. And then as much as you're able to, start to hinge over the hips, over the shins. Last big inhale. And then slowly unravel. Extend both legs forward. Remove the flesh from away from the sits bones so you feel rooted into the earth. Flex the toes towards your nose. Take a big inhale, lift up out of the waist. Exhale, reaching for the ankles, the toes, the shins, whatever you've got. If you've got a block to make your legs a little longer, you can do that too. Allow the back to round. Feel the stretch through the upper mid back of the neck, through the lower back. And then one bone at a time. Start to unravel onto your back. So set up for Shavasana. Allow the feet to fall open and allow the toes to roll away from the midline of the body. Allow the shoulder blades to lie flat. So we support the weight of the heart and the lungs. Hands can roll open away from the sides of your body. Close your eyes. No need to control your breath right here. Just let it breathe you. Feel the benefits of your practice. Start to take hold in the fibers of your being. Use the poses and the breath to release stuck energy in the fibers of your being. And take this time now for you and you if that needs to get left so that you can put down, so that you can release. Let this calm, connected, clear about what needs to have happen.
Respira os pés, os mãos e isso. Existe aqui o Reiki mesmo. Onde o Ed tem um mudra black dark em sua body. Existe um overhead no toes, the wrist. Give you a full body stretch. And then rolling onto your side, letting your head rest on your arm like a pillow. Just pause for a moment in this child's pose. Just child's pose, a fetal position. Hmm. It's also such a symbolic pose, posture to finish our practice because we do leave here our mat. The space that we practice in, this time that we take for ourselves, recentered. Our mind is reset. Our body feels restored. And we leave here feeling in some ways reborn. Keeping your eyes soft or closed. Press yourself up into a seated position. your palms together at the center of your chest. Thank you so much for taking time to practice with me. The light in me acknowledges the light in you. Touch your thumbs to your forehead center. Let us bow together and say Namaste. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.